With the recent update, the DCS FA18C Hornet has gained the ability to enter precise coordinates to our waypoints manually whilst in flight. This makes them suitable for use as target points for weapons. Unfortunately, we are still unable to enter MGRS or grid coordinates or offsets for the moment. Today we will cover entering precise waypoint coordinates, as well as some advanced features of the HSI including altitude warning, bullseye, waypoint sequences, and time on target. Creating precise manual waypoints. Before we start, you can set the default coordinate format used by the F10 map on the options, miscellaneous menu. And you can cycle the coordinates type used by pressing left alt Y to toggle the information bars coordinate format on the map in game. We can then place our pointer over our desired location of our waypoint and note the coordinates from the top left. So with that, let's get to entering some precise coordinates. We'll navigate to our HSI and enter the data page and then the waypoint sub page. Here we've got our currently selected waypoint and the coordinates are displayed in lat long format and MGRS grid in the center. Beneath that we've got our offset coordinates for the selected waypoint and at the bottom our time on target and required ground speed to our waypoint as well as our waypoint sequence. To access precise coordinate entry you simply select the precise button on the bottom of the display. This will enable the extra decimal places required to increase our accuracy. Now we can enter our precise coordinates. We can also select what coordinate format we would like to use. Navigate to the aircraft subpage. Here we have our INS information including our own location, wind speed, wind direction and the local magnetic variance. Below that we've got our GPS horizontal and vertical margin of error and the GPS time which should match Zulu time. On the right we can cycle from using magnetic or true heading. You may wish to select true if you've got an AWACS guiding you or you are using bearings from your F10 map. And finally on the bottom right we've got the coordinates format toggle. Pressing this will toggle between lat long in decimal minutes or seconds. If you're ever unsure which format you've got selected, reference this button or look at the coordinates shown. Degrees, minutes, and decimal minutes will show a decimal place after the first two pairs of numbers, whilst degrees, minutes, seconds will not, instead showing a single quote. We'll now enter in some precise coordinates. In this example we will enter degrees, minutes, decimal minutes. Start by entering the data page, pressing the sequence UFC button to edit our waypoints sequence. Press insert and enter a new waypoint number. This does not need to be in numerical order. Now select our newly created waypoint. We're still in degrees, minutes and seconds so we will change that to degrees, minutes, decimal minutes to match our coordinates. So we'll go to the aircraft sub page and select lat long decimal from the bottom right. Returning to the waypoint page, press the precise button to enable the extra decimal places. Now we simply enter our coordinates. Press UFC to open the menu, select elevation, feet, and enter the elevation followed by enter. Press the UFC button again to return to the main menu, select position. This starts with north, so we'll press 2 for north, and enter our degrees, minutes. Press enter, and now enter our thousandths of a minute, and push enter. Next, hit 6 for east, and enter our degrees, minutes, press enter. And once more, enter our decimal thousands of a minute, and push enter. We can now review the coordinates that were entered, back on our display. Remember to include any empty places with zeros, such as the number 7, which would be entered as 07, to maintain the correct formatting spacing. With that, we're done, and the waypoint is ready to use. We'll now go over some various miscellaneous advanced features of the HSI that we can configure. Altitude warning. There are a number of altitude warnings that we can configure. If we open the HSI, data, and go to the aircraft subpage, 
On the bottom, we've got our altitude warning systems. On the left, we have our warning altitudes. These will alert you when you pass below the selected altitude. Simply press the button below it and enter your desired altitude. This is a great way to set your minimum safe level. For example, if you've got AAA and IR SAM frets below you on the target area, setting this to about 13,000 feet above ground level will warn you when you are straying into their range and help keep you safe. When you pass below this altitude, it will present an audible warning. The radar altimeter warning cannot currently be selected. This functions exactly the same as the barometric warning, however it is for low altitude warnings with the radar altimeter. Again, it will have an audible altitude warning when passed below. This is separate from the radar altimeter warning, which is set by a dial. You can also turn off the terrain avoidance warning system. This will stop the aircraft shouting at you to pull up, pull up, when you're flying nap of the earth. Right, right. Right, right. Bullseye. You can configure a waypoint to be reference for bullseye, which is a fixed reference point used by all flights. You will often hear position callouts or targets by calling out an offset from the bullseye location with heading and distance from bulls. This is set on our HSI. Go to the data page, select the waypoint you wish to use as bullseye, and select the air to air waypoint button. You'll now see it boxed with a number showing which waypoint is selected as bullseye. You can then freely change your waypoints as you wish. If you do not have a preset waypoint for bullseye, you can find the bullseye location by referencing your F10 map. It appears as a series of concentric circles in your team's color. You can then grab the coordinates with your cursor. With this selected, you can now see the bullseye on our radar screen. On the top, showing the bullseye location of our cursor, with an icon indicating the bullseye itself if it is within our display. On the bottom center, it's showing our own bullseye location. This is very useful if you need to make a radio request for help. Waypoint sequences. Your flight computer can store up to 60 waypoints starting at waypoint 0 and ending at waypoint 59. Sequences are able to store up to 15 of those waypoints at any given time. If you attempt to add any more, they will bump the first waypoint off of the sequence. It's also worth noting that each sequence shares of those 60 waypoints, rather than having its own unique set of waypoints for each sequence. Sequences are easy to configure. Simply hit the Sequence UFC button. Now you can press either the INS or DEL to insert or delete a waypoint. Enter the number you wish to edit, and then press Enter to perform that action. Note that adding or removing a waypoint from a sequence does not delete the information stored in that waypoint. You can change which sequence you have selected by pressing the Sequence button on the bottom right. First press will box the sequence and draw dashed lines connecting all your waypoints together in order. Pressing it again will cycle to the next sequence. The computer allows you to store three different sets of waypoints without them cluttering up your display. If your flight plan has more than 15 waypoints entered into it with the mission editor, you will have to manually add these extra waypoints into your next sequence yourself. Sequences are great for separating out different sets of information. For example, typically you will have your flight plan on sequence 1, and you could then put anything else you wish on the other sequences, such as a list of your target waypoints, the front line, flight path of other aircraft such as a tanker or escort flight, and you could also use it to show a search area like a kill box, a no-fly zone, or anything else you can think of. Time on target. Sometimes you will need to be in a specific place at a specific time, perhaps even at a specific airspeed. This can be particularly important on carefully planned missions where you might be assigned a specific time slot at the tanker or over a target. Before we start, on our HSI, 
if you select the Time UFC from the bottom and reference the upfront controller, we can select either Zulu time or local time to display on our HUD. Pressing it again will also hide the information from our HUD. At the time of recording, however, only Zulu time can be displayed. On our fuel panel, we'll find the local time. You can toggle displaying Zulu and local time by pressing the zone button. A Z will appear when Zulu time is displayed here. So now that we know how to tell the time, let's move on to the configuration of the time on target functions. On the data page of our HSI, select the UFC sequence button. We'll now select which waypoint we want to have as our target for the time on target calculations. Select the TGT target button and enter the number of the waypoint you wish to arrive at on a specific time and push enter. You'll now see a box around that specific waypoint on our sequence indicating that it is set as our target. We can now configure the time we wish to arrive. Please note that this is selected in Zulu time, not local time. Once again, we'll press the sequence UFC button. This time we will select the TOT, time on target button. Enter our time in hours, minutes and seconds. Ensure to enter this in both Zulu and 24 hour formats. Include the preceding zeros for single digits. Optionally, we can also set what ground speed we want when we fly over that waypoint. If we press the GSPD ground speed button and enter our desired ground speed. What this does is set the required ground speed from the waypoint before our target waypoint to match our desired ground speed. As a result, it will adjust the speed you fly to all the preceding waypoints so that you can fly the final leg at your desired ground speed. Alternatively, you can ignore the ground speed setting completely and the computer will simply choose what speed you need to fly to arrive on time. Once you've got these set, ensure that you've got your next waypoint selected and return to the HSI. On here, you will see our ground speed and the required ground speed as calculated by the computer to reach your next waypoint on time. Remember that the computer will calculate your required airspeed to each waypoint sequentially, so ensure you have the correct waypoint selected as you fly the route. On our HUD, we've got a carrot below our airspeed, with a vertical line in the center, which indicates our target airspeed. The carrot will move forwards and backwards, representing our current airspeed relative to the one we require. If the carrot has moved to the left, we need to speed up as we are falling behind schedule. If it has moved to the right, we need to slow down because we are too fast. Adjust your airspeed until the center of the carrot sits on the line. At this point, I recommend using the auto throttle to hold your current airspeed. You can then simply follow your waypoints in order, making adjustments to speed as required. Remember that each time you pass a waypoint, there is a very good chance the required airspeed will change, so be prepared for this. Finally, when you reach the waypoint just before your target waypoint, you will be asked to fly at your target ground speed if you have set one. This allows you to easily arrive at a specific point to within a few seconds if you have had a little practice with it. That covers all the advanced features I wanted to touch on since they didn't really deserve a video of their own. I hope you've enjoyed and take care.